Hello everybody and welcome back to Deb Creates and today we've got knitted dogs so here they are the first two dogs are actually knitted versions of my own dogs which uh, have been gone for some years now um, so this is Todd and Todd was a border collie cross and this is Bonnie and Bonnie was we don't really know what Bonnie was she looks like she's got a bit of Labrador in her maybe a bit of terrier she was a bit of a mix and then this one is just from the pattern for a knitted Labrador so it's a chocolate Labrador uh, so we're back to the island art patterns here so uh, anybody who hasn't watched any of my previous uh, posts um, Alan Dart is a um, very talented uh, pattern designer for many animals, dogs, cats, uh, woodland animals, um, many, many different, um, and, and also lots of different dolls and all sorts of things, very creative person. And so, um, so the patterns are taken from, uh, from his dogs. And once you, I would say once you've got one or two of the patterns, you can actually make several different dogs from the same pattern because obviously there isn't a pattern for a dog that's a crossbreed so you have to kind of make him up so um so so Todd had a lot of border collie in him but he's very spotty and speckly and so the border collie pattern which is here so that's the pattern there for the border collie and he doesn't have any spots on him on that one so it's a case of having to put them in yourself if your dog is a bit different and also with the colours, things like that. You can also put in the different colours. Um, so Bonnie was very uh, tricoloured dog. So um, with little, her little eyebrows and everything. So that took a bit of thought and planning to get in the, um, the colours that she was and, and reference to the, uh, the photographs and everything to try and get it to look like Bonnie. Um, the Labrador, the chocolate Labrador, much easier because he's one colour. So if you've got a golden Labrador, something like that, he was quite simple to do. A black Labrador, we used to have a black Labrador. That would be easy to do um, because you haven't got to worry about the colours and where they go and how they, they fit in. So, um, but all this colouring on the, on the nose and everything is in this pattern for the Border Collie because that's, because Border Collies are like that. Um, the Bonnie dog, I basically, she's still the Labrador pattern and I've just made up the, uh, the colours myself and put them in as much as uh, I could. So some actually knitted and stitched on afterwards and some knitted in with the pattern. So, um, so not too bad to do, a little bit fiddly, a little bit fiddly. The, the complicated things about the dogs is that the setting in of the legs, I think, to get the, the hind quarters in the right place and to get them to, to sit nicely, that, that's quite tricky. So there's a bit of a balance going on there. And, and thinking about it, I probably put, should have put some strengtheners into the legs so that they really sit up nice and straight because unless you really overstuff them, the legs don't seem that strong. So um, so they're all like the, the upright seated dog pattern, but there are patterns for dogs that are laid down and stood up, but, you know, different types of dogs that you can get there. Um, what else can we say? So the collars, this is a knitted collar on, the, on, on Max, the, uh, the Labrador. Uh, Bonnie's, I bought it from the pet shop and it kind of, to me, it works nicer, the little pet shop ones, because they don't curl up or, or because um, Todd's collar has, has rolled a little bit. So really I should have probably stitched it on. You can stitch them down and then you won't get that rolling. But um, but I thought that the, the bought collar, which is only a couple of pounds, actually worked nicer somehow and makes it makes it look a bit more realistic. So, um, so yeah, so uh, I was quite pleased with that. Um, it's quite a project. It's not going to be done in a day. You know, they do take a while and quite a lot of stuffing, as you can see, because they are actually quite big. So um, so they do require a fair amount of material uh, to stuff them with. Um, you can possibly see that Todd was the first dog I ever made and I think I put his ears on the wrong way around. So, so he's got very strange ears. He did have enormous standing up ears, but they do seem to be a little bit, I don't know, they're a little bit odd. So, um, so I think I actually stitched them on the wrong, 
at the wrong angle or the wrong way around. So again, when you put the ears on, you need to experiment with your dog and just pin them on, see if they look correct for the dog. You can move them forward or back to, you know, whatever, just, just to see if they look like they're in the right place. So, um, so that's probably getting the, um, the aesthetics right is probably the, the most difficult bit really to make the dog look like either your own dog or the dog you're attempting to make. So, um, so I have just a couple of patterns to show you, which is we have a dachshund. So that's an interesting one. So these are, are, are quite recently, recently acquired patterns. So I haven't made any of these dogs yet, but that's the dachshund. And all these patterns you can get off the internet. So you just look up Alan Dart and put in dogs and all your dogs that he's done patterns for will pop up. And you can just order it off the internet, have it sent straight to your um, uh, printer and print them off. So absolutely no problem to get hold of at the moment as we haven't got many shops open. Absolutely no problem. This one I absolutely love and that's the Springer Spaniel. So the Springer Spaniel is just fantastic and I'm definitely going to be having a go at him very soon. So uh, so hopefully I'll be able to show you that one when he's finished. Um, beautiful pattern that one. Uh, this is, uh, I, I did show you at the start, but that's the original pattern for the, um, the, the Border Collie. So, um, so as I say, there are many different styles of dog that you can get the patterns for and also as I say these patterns can be adapted so if you have a dog that's got the long ears you could probably make um, maybe the Cocker Spaniel out of that one and you know different ones so you can experiment and make um, make different dogs out of the original pattern if it kind of resembles your dog so uh, so so there they are the knitted dogs so um, Little tails on the back. So I haven't put any wire into the tails, but uh, pipe cleaners or anything, but you could do if you want the tail to sort of stay at a, a certain angle or, uh, or or stand up a little bit, something like that, then um, then you could definitely put some uh, some pipe cleaners into the uh, the tails to give them a bit more uh, a bit more um, uh, you know you can you can do something with them then and as I say the legs to me the legs just are a little bit weak and if you ever stuff them you end up with like seeing the stuffing through the wall because you stretched it too far so um so maybe some strengtheners in these front legs would have would have been an idea at the time but um it, it doesn't ask for that in the pattern and I didn't think of it so um so so they don't have them but um but yeah some strengtheners into the front legs would probably be a really good idea if you want your dog who's going to sit somewhere and uh, be on display or anything like that then it's probably a good idea so there we have knitted dogs so uh, if you fancy having a go and making uh, making a pup then uh, then good luck with that and uh, thanks for watching and uh, if you like my channel give me a thumbs up and if you want to subscribe next up knitted dancing dollies Thanks for watching. Bye.